Yo my dudes, welcome back to another before and after build series. Um, so what we do plan on doing today is to give you guys an update on the Red VTEC. Um, they did mention that he has done some work to the car. Unfortunately I was busy so I wasn't able to film anything. Um, he did mention that he did some uh, dent removal. So I'll just do a walk around on the car and show you guys what Dane has done and how he went about doing it. Also, uh, I need to drop off Tariq's um, rear bumper by then because Dane is obviously going to do the rear bumper. Then I think Tariq um, is going to fetch his petrol cap, so he might just be there as well. So, yeah, guys, that is what we do have planned for today. Let's get started. Okay, guys, so I just arrived at Dane. There's Dane over there. And this is the car. Just going to give you guys a quick walk around. Um, as you guys can see, obviously, there's no front bumper and there's no headlights everything was removed i also see some writing over here yes and busted i think you said that john drena john is the cousin of the owner of this car so he just wrote busted here because obviously the way the car looks right now just going to give you guys a quick walk around around the car uh, like i mentioned before or um, in the previous uh, video i was showing you guys that they basically sanded the whole car and then um, these little marks over here, um, this is body filler. So like I mentioned previously, when you sand, um, the shinier part will obviously mean that there's a dent. So this is obviously filling the dent. So all these marks like this, you guys will see, will all be um, sections where there were actual dents. And it's now basically one level over here. And then also a few things that Dane did mention over here. The scratchy little... Thing that looks kind of looks funny here um this is rust pasta you said rust pasta so this is um you just put some rust pasta on before you actually primers it um the reason also why there's no primers on it like i mentioned previously this primer does look a little bit dark um so we are just trying to figure out what we are going to do um going forward maybe just use a lighter base coat um something to that effect so dane and the owner still figuring out that um because that also determines how the color is going to look in the end and then just um going a little back over here um i'll show you guys that dane is actually in the process of um, removing it then so i would say if you use a block sander like this obviously the surface is is, is straight so a block sander will then create or make um how can i say Okay. The body level in other terms, yeah. So yeah, this is what Dane is busy with right now. I'll show you guys um, when he is done with that. And let me just walk around to the other side of the car as well. Okay, so this is the other side. Um, as you guys can see, all the dents that were removed. Another busted over here. <laughs> So as you guys can see, there's many dents actually um, that was removed. And there's a big bastard here. And another big bastard over here on the side as well. <laughs> so yeah, there isn't actually um, a dent that I wanted to show you guys. It was actually very big. What, which was the biggest dent, would you say? Which one? On the over here. So guys, uh, this is um, the biggest or the worst dent, um, Dane would say, uh, is on the car. So this is something that they need to fix. If I can turn like this, you guys can actually just see it. Um, this line moves in, inwards over here. So they indeed mention that this is most likely the biggest dent um, that he does have to fix. So what they has just taught me now is that um, first of all, he uses the block sand over here just to create obviously the shape and the layer. And then afterwards it goes over it with the orbit, orbital sander. No? Yeah. So the orbital sander is the one that he was using in the previous episode um, so this I think removes this the scratchy forms mm. right so the cross, pattern. the cross pattern over here so as you guys will see um, this is the block sander this creates a level and then the orbital sander will basically remove um, the scratches like Dane mentioned over here so it, Dane is just going to continue with that and I'll just show you um, the end result when he's done okay. it's fun like that Okay. And then you get the one that actually moves Oof. like side to side as well. Yeah, I've seen that before. So this isn't a dual action, it's like a rotary. 
So it's like around three. So it turns. Yeah, time. this one just so turns. So because it turns, uh, it obviously must not doesn't give the scratchy form over here, right? Yeah. So in other terms, the orbital sand is almost like a, a buff machine, but for sanding, in other words, to make it easier to explain. So for all the people out there who think I'm making like swirl marks or um, an uneven surface, I'm using interface pads on the orbital sander. So you can see if you come in closer, it's like a little sponge, right? Okay. So even if I sand at a slightly uneven angle, if you can see in the video, the sandpaper disc is still level. So I'm not doing, like if I remove the, if I, without the interface pad on, if I'm going to tilt my hand, you'll see that this is lifting off. Mm. So then it's going to make a, basically a deeper um, sanding mark right there. Okay guys, so what Dane was actually explaining is that um, he is using interface pad. So just to give you guys a quick brief of what I mean is um, without this interface pad, um, the, how can I say, uh, this machine will basically be directly against the body. But with the interface pads, he, there's like some type of play. So as you guys can see, if I move backwards like that, uh, um, how can I say, it won't focus mainly on there because of the whole pad. So let's say for example this thing was in here and it's just a flat surface it will basically sand mainly down this way if you're going to press there but with the interface pad you can see that there is some type of play so it doesn't um how can i say sand aggressive very aggressive um with using the interface pad so that is just something that they also use that also helps a lot um when sanding a car as well Bye. 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 Okay guys, so what I'm going to do right now is just um, put you guys up on a time lapse and then basically show you how Dane um, repairs this using the block sander as well as the orbital sander as well. And then hopefully in the time lapse you guys can actually see um, the differences as it continues. So this is somewhat uh, the progress um, over here. So as you guys can see, I'm not quite sure if you could see in um, the time lapse, uh, these um, white marks actually get smaller because when you use um, a body filler, for example, you put more on, and then when you remove it, it obviously um, makes a level all one. So um, as you guys have also seen in the video, that Dan also kind of taught me um, how to sand. So I'm just trying to do it myself as well. Um, what we are going to do right now is we are going to kind of spray like maybe some black spray or any color spray lightly over here. Uh, I think me, they mentioned it's called like a pilot coat. So what the pilot coat basically does is just gives a, a, a light layer and then when we sand and then let's say for example we use uh, black. Then if there is some black um, left over that obviously means that uh, the layer is um, not correct. And we obviously have to sand a little bit more. So that is what we're going to do right now. We're just going to apply uh, a pilot layer and then sand it from there. Okay guys, so after a few light sands, as you guys can see, this area over there and over there, um, that actually shows um, the pilot coat is actually still showing. So what that means is that that areas are a little bit deeper than the rest of uh, the bootlet so what Dane is going to do is just add a little bit of body fill on both sides um, so that he can sand it. So like I mentioned earlier on, the pilot coat is an indication to show the different levels of uh, the bootlet. Um, so we're just going to sand the section over here as well and see if there's any areas um, that Dane would have to fix 
um, over here as well. Okay guys, so um, we just sand the rest of it now and they did mention that this one is all good as well as this side over here. But if you guys can see um, on this side and on that side, it is a little bit deeper than normal. As in also what I wanted to mention is that um, you would have to use the block sander to obviously um, determine um, the levels or when you basically do the pilot coat, you would obviously have to use the block sander to determine the level or to see um, where it still needs um, some more body filler. And then what Dane is also going to do right now is just jack up um, the car so that the wheel can be out of the way and then he is going to attempt to um, just knock that dent out a little bit more uh, before he does body fill it. Guys, so um, I just thought I'd show you this as well. As you guys can see, this gap is a little bit bigger. So what Dane said that if it's like a three millimeter gap, then it's obviously not recommended to use a body fill over here. So what I assume um, Dane is maybe going to do is just try to push this out a little bit, um, just so that it is kind of level um, using this ruler over here. And then maybe just add the body filler to um, obviously create the correct level as well. Um, what Dane also mentioned that if you do go that out of actually using body filler um, this could easily just chip with a slight knock over here and then this whole thing will chip and obviously the whole fender would then have to be resprayed again Okay guys, um, so Dane just basically sanded down the body filler and then we also use uh, the pilot coat uh, method and then I don't know if you guys can see over here, there's an indication that the section still is a little bit dented uh, which means that Dane just needs to add some more body filler and then level it up again. Okay guys, so another thing I just picked up uh, based on observation and also asking Dane I see when he applies it, like let's say for example the dent is over here and when he applies it, he basically presses it hard um, obviously where there's no dent and then he releases the pressure where the dent is so that ba that basically fills up the dent and then um, gains pressure again when there's no dent that way um, when you're applying everything the filler then just fills up the gap and where there was no dent it will just basically glide through that section as well just something I picked up based on observation and 
Dane actually just confirmed that that is exactly what he's doing. Okay guys, so this is what the fender looks like now. Uh, in my opinion, it looks um, completely perfect, like nothing actually did happen. But obviously you can see the body filler and the section where the layers are. So what I am going to do right now, I'm just going to take a slow walk around the car. Show you guys all the dents. Um, I'll maybe try to put this video up. Um, with the final product and I'm just gonna take a, a slow walk around the car and show you guys all the dents um, that Dane has fixed um, so you guys can also have a mental note as to what was all done and then when the final product um, is shown you guys will obviously see that that will no longer be there so obviously all these spots or all dents that were removed by Dane even the small one over here bear in mind some of them are maybe just even paint chips um, this one obviously looks a little bit big um, And I don't know if you guys recall when I mentioned that uh, He actually dove through a forest or something That is all removed um, So this is the driver side over here And then let me just show you guys uh, the roof Like I mentioned earlier on um, There's still discussion as to what primer is going to be used That's why Dane just added um, so I'm a rust buster in the meanwhile um, And then when the owner does agree or decide what primer he wants to use or what uh, color base code is used Dane will then primer the whole thing uh, What Dane also mentioned is that this the whole car needs to be block sanded uh, That does take some time and he's also asked me to maybe just assist him with that uh, That way I will learn as well So guys uh, this whole build series actually for me to learn and for you guys to learn from that as well so I'm just taking you guys along with on this journey and I hope you guys are enjoying it because I certainly am. I'm learning a lot from Dane and I do plan on doing um, or assisting other people with um, different type of mods uh, besides like spray painting. So in future, uh, like I did mention before, I do tend or I do plan on um, assisting um, or filming uh, before and after of some power build as well. That way I will learn a lot from that and you guys will too as well. Um, so yeah, another thing I just want to uh, mention is that a lot of you guys actually ask why do I sound so out of breath. The main reason for that is I'm using a cell phone and my battery dies very easily. Sometimes I don't carry my power bank and sometimes I make a mistake and I have to reform a video. I sometimes remember what I need to say and that comes out maybe faster than the things that I forgot to say but anyway that is the main reason why so yeah um, I'm gonna end of the video here guys um, like I mentioned this videos will maybe uh, be put out a little bit more faster or a little bit how can I say quicker than normal because uh, this is progress basically there's progress every day on the car so yeah um, I will be helping Dane in the next video mainly to sand the car and then the car will most likely get primer and then from there obviously be spread. So I hope you guys stay tuned for that and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace.